Whenever you're ready, you can go ahead and start. Okay. Voting is not only our right, it is our power. When we vote, we take back our power to choose, to speak up, and to stand with those who support us and each other. This quote was said by a human rights activist, Wong Ong. I chose this quote to start off my speech because I agree with it 100%. I believe voting is more powerful than some may think. Today I'm going to be talking about the history of voting, why you should vote, and why voting is so crucial. To start off, I'll begin with the history of voting. While the founding fathers saw voting as a fundamental component of democracy and perfect union with such create, the right to vote was denied for many populations for centuries from US history. In the beginning, voting was mainly restricted to property only white men. This meant poor white men, blacks, and women could not vote. In 1792, they abolished property qualifications for white men, so that just left the blacks and women without the right to vote. African Americans went through a lot of different exercises of the right to vote. The 14th Amendment to the Constitution granted African Americans the right to citizenship. However, this did not always translate into the ability to vote. Black voters were systematically turned away from state polling places. To combat this problem, Congress passed the 16th Amendment in 1870. It says, the rights of citizens of the United States to vote shall not be denied or abridged by the United States or by any state on account of race, color, or population of servitude. Yet, they still found a way to avoid the Constitution and prevent blacks from voting. For example, they used a literary test for blacks to take before they voted. Louisiana by far had the most impossible test. There were no questions about the state's inner workings nor the country, but instead 30 questions that were obviously designed for future safety. So right here is the test. For example, like question one, it says draw a line under the number or letter of this sentence. And then question four says, but I said circle the first first letter of the alphabet in this line. Like I as you can see, this is it's not important to go in and just want to confuse the statement. Women also had to go through trouble as well to earn their right to vote. The framers of the Constitution and many who followed them for more than 100 years believed that women were childlike and incapable of independent thought. They believed that women could not be counted on to vote responsibly, so they left women out of state voting laws. It took until 1920 for that right to be added to the Constitution. But although women in America have had the right for less than a century, they exercise it in much greater numbers and greater percentages than their male counterparts. According to the Center for American Women in Politics at Rutgers University, there are clear gender differences in voter turnout. In recent elections, voter turnout rates for women have equaled or exceeded voter turnout rates for men. Women who constitute more than half the population have cast between four and seven million more votes than men in recent elections. In every presidential election since 1980, the proportion of female adults who voted has exceeded the proportion of male adults who voted. Also, according to the Census Bureau, blacks reached a record higher of 66.6% in 2012 when Barack Obama was on the ballot that year. Sadly, the black voter turnout rate declined for the first time in 20 years in a presidential election following the ballot. 765,000 to 16.4 million in 2016, representing a sharp reversal from 2012. The fact that we as a people pick and choose when to go vote is that it shouldn't, it shouldn't matter if the person is black or a female, you should go vote regardless. Now that I've gone over some history of voting, it's time to talk about why you should vote. One reason why you should vote is because a lot more is at stake than just who becomes president. Even though presidential elections may get most of the attention, that doesn't mean they're more important than other elections. According to TradeSchool.net, most people, most Americans tend to not participate in midterm elections. In fact, for the 2014 midterms, only about 14% of eligible people turned out to vote. So this is just a graph. Example, the presidential and the midterm, as you see, the midterm is at the bottom and declining. In reality, what happens in a midterm election can be even more critical. The American system of government is built upon a foundation of checks and balances at the local, state, and federal level. As in presidential election years, the midterm almost always feature key races for people like U.S. senators, state governor, mayors, and like the judges. So if you don't agree with how the president is handling things or don't believe in his character, you need to vote people who provide a check on his power. Or if you support the president's actions, you should vote people who will implement his policies. 
We also vote to have our voices heard on all kinds of issues that impact our lives and the lives of others. For example, we vote for like affording college, health care, um, climate change, taxes. Another reason why you should vote is that you owe it to America's heroes. Countless Americans have sacrificed their lives or suffered extreme hardship in order to secure your right to vote. That includes military service members, women, minorities, and many others at home and abroad who have fought for liberty and civil rights. When you vote, you honor their sacrifices. We must never take our voting rights for granted. They can only be preserved by casting our ballots in every election and guarding against politicians who seek to suppress our vote. Now it's time to talk about why voting is so crucial. Young people make up a large portion of the voting eligible population, but they're less likely to vote than older people. According to thebestcolleges.org, in 2016, only 19% of people aged 18 to 29 cast their ballot in the presidential election. At 49%, 45 to 64-year-olds accounted for the largest electorate last year. If the majority of young people voted during this election, maybe it could have been a different turnout, but we would never know because they didn't. Another reason why voting is so crucial is because young people were hit the hardest by the Great Recession. College debt and a lack of jobs dealt some of the most crippling blows to the financial futures of many young voters after the Great Recession in the late 2000s. Though unemployment rates have declined, millennials have found their footing in a new economy. Policy change and reform in areas that affect college students, such as debt forgiveness and health care, are as crucial now as they were in the 2008 election. This, the situation won't change if you're sitting at home while others make major political decisions. You voters who want to inspire change to show their support for the candidates whom they best feel represent their needs. So this means if you don't like, for example, we like, didn't like Hillary or Donald, just pick the one you least like or least not like. My final reason on why voting is so crucial is the fact that the youth vote can sway the election. As mentioned before, your vote does matter so much that the collective youth vote could actually sway the election. Millennials have been credited with the decisive vote in the 2012 election of Barack Obama for a second term as president. Obama won 67% of the national youth vote, proving more popular in crucial states such as Florida, Virginia, Pennsylvania, and Ohio over Mitt Romney. In 2016 candidates, the 2016 candidates campaigned hard for 18 to 29 percent signally out initiators to target millennials as a powerful electoral group. Why? Because they know how much <laughs> our power is, yeah, they know how much our power will prove for this money majority. So, also it literally takes less than 10 minutes to vote. I worked in the polls last year and I voted and it literally took me, it was my first time voting, and it literally took me like five minutes and I didn't know what I was doing. And we also help people who didn't know what they were doing. Like we'll go over there and we'll just show you how to use the machine or show you how to like check off the ballots. So it didn't take 10 minutes of your time, less than 10 minutes. So in conclusion, please keep in mind the history of voting, why voting is so crucial, and why you need to take action to vote. Remember, elections belong to the people. It's their decision. If they decide to turn their backs on people and run their behind, then they will have to sit on their voices. Abraham Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.